In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void and darkness. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. According to Wolfgang Smith, there are two ways the cosmic order can be perceived. Heliocentrism, sun as center, arose not from the senses, but from intellect, because it is the cosmic manifestation of God. It gives light. It gives being to the universe. It has truths. But from the perspective of physics, it is false. I will argue in this manner, there are two ways the social order may also be perceived. One works within the biblical logos. The other works against the logos. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. Similarly, social orders that work against the biblical logos have truths, but from the perspective of creation and intention, logos, they are false and will fail. Such will be the outcome of the grand social orders envisioned as the final workings of the 19th century theory of evolution, itself a resurrected pagan creation myth in which everything started from nothing, then evolved into the exact opposite of biblical creation. Starting from the earth before the sun, and the evolution version, sun before the earth, ending with the biblical version of God creating man and the evolution tale of man creating God. In the history of education, this inversion from creation to evolution is a 20th century phenomenon that reflects the monopoly of Darwinism, the man-made religion that pervades all of the departments at the modern university. In science, man is placed above God. In social science, man is placed above God. In the humanities, man is placed above God. In art, man is placed above God. Again, Wolfgang Smith notes, one perspective is consistent with the creation and intention of the biblical logos, whereas the evolutionist thesis has become more stridently unthinkable than ever before, he explains. A growing number of respectable scientists are defecting from the evolutionist camp. Moreover, for the most part, these experts have abandoned Darwinism not on the basis of religious faith or biblical persuasions, but on strictly scientific grounds, and in some instances, regretfully. Likewise, a growing number of respectable citizens are defecting from the political ideas espoused by the New World Order camp. Over the past 20 years, the agenda has become increasingly scrutinized in light of its esoteric implications and found wanting in its cause to achieve the universal aspirations of mankind. 
Increasingly, we question the final social order envisioned by the U.S. President in the address before the U.S. session of Congress on the State of the Union in 1991, in which George Bush announces, what is at stake is more than one small country. It is a big idea, a new world order, where diverse nations are drawn together in common cause to achieve the universal aspirations of mankind. Peace, security, freedom, and the rule of law. Increasingly, we question whether this big idea constitutes a counter-biblical perspective. More than a new social arrangement, adherence to the big idea appear to envision a new cosmic order. Quote, an endless enduring dream and a thousand points of light, end quote, in which, as we shall see, the Big Bang cosmos and creation, the thousand points of light, must be brought into singularity. Quote, the old ideas are new again because they are not old. They are timeless. Duty, sacrifice, commitment, and a patriotism that finds its expression in taking part and pitching in. We will now explore why this common cause to achieve the universal aspirations of mankind works against the biblical logos and why it will fail.